Hey, everybody. We promised you a yep. review of A Quiet Place 2, and it is time. Oh, man. Long time coming, sir. Quiet mm-hmm. Place 2. We went to a movie theater to watch this movie, and I just want to say Paramount, John Krasinski, mm-hmm. thank you for holding off and not releasing this on streaming service. Because I was talking about this last night, and they Paramount launched their own streaming service this past year. Paramount Plus, I believe. Yeah. They had every right to do it, but they held off because this was a wow. Was this a theater experience? Yes, they were. They believe in it. John Krasinski, even at the beginning, was like, "This has to be experienced in a theater," of course, mm-hmm. and that's what made it all the more awesome. And I'm glad, like you, I'm glad they did it. And uh, we went last night and we saw it. Uh, I'm not. I'm gonna say this real quick, Gary. You probably were the same way. As the movie started, I got a little nervous because there are people mm-hmm. chattering and walking around. Oh, like, oh boy. Man. Is it going to be a bad Ooh. experience? But thankfully, about a minute or two into the movie, it calmed down, and yes, it was the, the experience we needed. Yeah, there was a point I was like, "Oh man, maybe." Uh, uh, I was like, "Maybe, maybe the home viewing is uh, where it's at because <laughs> you know, at least there yeah. it's quiet, but people piped down and yes. paid attention, and uh, because the movie did its job." Yep. It did. So. It really did. So I think we just need to go ahead and start, you know, digging into. Dive into this. it. Yeah, just just dive into it. Just dive into it. Sorry. So, <laughs> uh, hey, you do what you got to do. So Quiet yeah. Place 2, uh, what were some of the good things that you had out of this, Gary? Uh, let's see. Um, I love that it took off. No, this isn't really a spoiler, but it, you know, it took off right where the first one left off. I thought that was good. Um, it creates a great um, double feature viewings in the future of Quiet Place 1 and Quiet Place 2 back to back. Maybe we should do a host a Halloween party doing that this year. There we go. Um, uh, the cast was great. Um, you know, Emily Blunt, one of my favorites. Um, the, the, the Who played her kids, I, their names escaped me, were great. The baby was amazing. Yes, it was. Best baby actor I've ever seen. Uh, Excellent Julian dramatic Murphy. timing. Let me yeah. tell you. Uh, the way it was shot, John Krasinski, he directed the heck out of this movie. He wrote it. Um, as you can tell, I'm not, I, I loved it. <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, so I can go on and on with the good. Um, it was a great sequel. It did exactly what a good sequel is supposed to do. Continue the story, making it feel fresh. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just... I can't say enough good things. Yes. Yeah, and I and I agree. Um, there was it was just so good. I like the and this isn't a spoiler because it's in the trailer, but I like the the flashback stuff, mm-hmm. um, you know, taking you back to when it all began, and uh, and I liked how they handle that because sometimes, you know, as you know, Gary, when people try to do flashbacks or prequel s stuff, it ends up ruining the story because mm-hmm. the mystery was better. But I thought they mm-hmm. kept enough mystery in this to just kind of be like, okay, um, to just kind of be like, okay, this is where we're going, but they still don't really know what's happening. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Um, sorry. Again, family. Hey, our viewers are used to it by now. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I just thought that was really good and just seeing how it all began. And again, they didn't like ruin the first one by doing that. So I thought no. that was really good. And there's a child in the background. And um, yeah, so I appreciate that. Like I said, everyone acting in this top notch. Like you said, mm-hmm. even down to the baby, everything was great about it. The story, um, there is, there is that the one scene. Uh, yeah, no, no, go out there, please. Sorry, um, there is that one scene that I thought was really good. Uh, you agreed uh, with me. Try not to spoil anything, but this the scene with boats. Mm-hmm. Like let's just put it that way. If you haven't seen this movie, when it comes time for boats, be ready because it was yeah. awesome. That whole thing was really good. That was just. Top notch right there. Mm-hmm. The whole that that might have been my favorite scene in the movie. And I think and this is something I realized last night what watching other reviewers. Um, mm-hmm. the way this movie was shot, and it goes into what you're saying with ruining the mystery of it, is mm-hmm. if you think about it like the alien whatever they are, they're yeah. never really focused on. They're there, but you like everything mm-hmm. else is filmed around it. Like when, like in the trailer, the scene from the trailer where she's backing up and you see it in the bus, like you see it, it's in full frame, but there's so much going on around it that there's, it's the environment that makes it scary, not necessarily the, 
the, the creature, if you will. Right. Um, so if it was just taught all the time, alien, 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 it'd be like, okay, this is getting old, but it was, it was able to do that, but make it feel fresh at the same time. And I felt like they were still a threat, even though we knew from the first one how to get them, you know? Right. Yeah. And they're still a threat. And especially, I like that they focused in on the, you know, the eldest daughter. I mm-hmm. like that they focused in, they gave her a lot more to do because I think that's how, like you said, like that whole scene, like there are a lot of scenes with her, you definitely felt a little bit more of the dread and suspense of what was going mm-hmm. on because she's deaf. And mm-hmm. so she can't hear everything right, you know? And so like, so that makes it harder for her. And then you see those mm-hmm. moments where she's just trying to do her thing. And then it's like, she just happens to notice yeah. out of the eye. And she's like, oh man, and then she has to react. And so, like, I thought that was brilliant to do that because, like you said, if they were um, just going to continue and, okay, here's how we get them, here's how we do, it probably would have got old really fast. Um, Mm -hmm. But I think that was really good. And then, of course, just other things that happened to the family um, to really just build build the world, like you said last night, excellent world building. But then Mm -hmm. to just continue, like, these things are still a huge threat. How are we going to survive this? Um, so I thought that was really good. And honestly, I love the ending um, yeah. because with the ending, I, 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 how did I say it last night? I said something to the effect of he is taking a movie, like he's taking two movies and making it feel like a TV series that's going to continue mm-hmm. building on top of each other. And so I yeah. love that. I love that this can continue if they want it to. Mm-hmm. And like in the first one, we see they discover how to, you know, the chink in the armor, if you will, of these creatures. And so this one, it, it does a, it brilliantly tries to take that next step. Okay. How do they take that message? Cause they can't just yell it from the rooftops. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to figure. So it's just, you know, it's just such a, uh, such a, I don't know. The first one and this one, was just such an original movie to me. Um, mm-hmm. Such an interesting concept because I was thinking about this when the, when the movie started last night, like, this is brilliant because we're surrounded by noise constantly. Mm-hmm. I mean, I sleep with a fan on next to my bed. I usually have a podcast in my ears because I gotta have the noise because I'm 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 twisted, I'm messed up. You know, like that would be our downfall, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and and not to spoil anything, but immediately the first thing you see when it all starts is somebody's cell phone gives them away. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know? And so it's just such a brilliant concept and it's and it's pretty terrifying to think about that. Like when you can't make a sound like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and this movie built up, built on that message on that whole thing yeah. brilliantly. Yeah. So I thought, I thought they did as well. And again, John Krasinski building that world, even the introduction of new characters I thought was well done. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause there's one main new character, if that makes mm-hmm. sense that, you know, was kind of mentioned and then he just kind of shows up and then he's like a very, vital role to the rest of the movie and it's just like oh i like the way they did that you know instead of just introducing a new character and then being like flashback in the middle of the movie you know yeah. like anything like that so I, it just it was really well done he knew what he was doing with this and again well, just be the way they wrote it was great well it was like i like how they did that new character i'm i'm, I'm assuming you're talking about K- uh, killian murphy's character yes um he it, he was written in like he wasn't written in like I'm the new dad I'm the new John Krasinski of the movie he was his own character like yeah. there's even a line that says I'm not him you know yeah. um and he was it got allowed to be his own person his own character and this family's dealing with the loss of a husband a father mm-hmm. the end of the world you know you name it trying to get the message out to how to stop new these baby. things new baby yeah I mean and Emily Blunt you know she took she wasn't in it a whole lot um which is kind of a disappointment because she's such a great actress, but it's good because it was a, a, it allowed her daughter's character mm-hmm. to pick up the mantle and be that, you know, that lead, which she which did is, tremendous. Which is part of what I loved about the ending because mm-hmm. it really focused in, you know, on the kids. I mean, the majority mm-hmm. of it was focusing on the kids and mm-hmm. it's almost like the, the handing of the baton, like how are they going to continue this story? How are they going to rise up? and live in this world. And it's just, you know, like it didn't give too much, but it's like gave enough to show like, okay, we're going somewhere with this. Like to me, I feel like they definitely have a plan for at least a third one, but I wouldn't Mm -hmm. be surprised if we're getting part three, part four, part five, just by the way this thing is, is building up. Like I wouldn't be surprised if, if he has plans for multiple movies like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree because 
it the way that is set up is it hasn't shown everything there's there's so many different ways it can go story wise you know what's beyond where they are what's going on globally you know you brought it up last night when mm-hmm. we were talking in the movie theater is this a regional situation is this a america situation is this all over the planet what is going on and uh, yeah. they can explore that if they want to you yeah. know but and, and i would love to see them do that but at the same time if it ends the way it ended nodding at this is how they try to stop them I'll be happy with that too because yeah. if so, we got two great movies. Yeah, yeah. You definitely don't want to, you know, wear out your welcome, right? No, you and don't. So I, I think this. Movie, <laughs> yeah, I think this movie definitely made it to where, like, if they bring in a third, it would be greatly welcomed. Mm-hmm. But they would really have to show something different. They would have to do something so dramatically different yeah. to where it'll make guys like us be like, okay, yes, I want a fourth. Like, I want to see where yeah. else we're going with this. So. You know, a tall order if they do a part three, but if they don't, mm-hmm. and this is it, and that's what you get, I'm again, I'm I'm perfectly happy. Yeah, you just gotta be careful. You don't want this to turn into the Tremors franchise. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Or yeah. the heck with it. Or First Star one's Wars. great. Second one's a guilty pleasure, and the rest are like made for TV sci-fi movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but yeah. uh, or so, or the Quiet Place Ten starring Vin Diesel. Oh, oh gosh, don't do that. <laughs> a fat, a, a Fast and Furious place. Oh my gosh! Sorry, sorry, yes. I shouldn't have done that. that. Yeah, you shouldn't. Have. That was, that was the only thing I do hope is I want to see John Krasinski direct and write more. Yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah, he's I do's got some talent. He's not just Jim anymore. You know, no, he's not. He's his own you man, know. and he, he needs is. to do more. Mm-hmm. So and, and uh, so going into it, uh, any bad <laughs> out of this? So, I mean, I know we just talked so much good. Um, I guess I'll start off, Gary. Maybe got to keep thinking about this one. Mm-hmm. Um, I just for me, and I think I mentioned I did mention this to you last night, but uh, to our viewers, probably the, the the one bad thing for me, and it's not really bad. It's I don't know. Either way, it's like I felt like with the first one, what they, the way you you didn't really see the creatures till the end. Mm-hmm. They were always just kind of like lurking or running fast. I feel like built up a lot more suspense and dread of like what was going on. Um, to where now, like you see them, like you already know what they look like. And then they don't shy away from showing them now because you already know what they look like and stuff. So I felt like it took away a little of the suspense, but I don't feel like that was like a bad like mistake or something that the movies mm-hmm. made. It was just, I, mean, I don't know what else you can do with the story. I mean, you have to yeah. show these creatures eventually. And then once mm-hmm. you show them, it's always going to, no matter what, it's always going to kind of be like, oh, okay, it's kind of like in a uh, signs. You didn't see mm-hmm. the aliens, but then when you finally mm-hmm. saw it, you're kind of like, you kind of feel more relaxed. Yeah, like, okay, I see the enemy. I know. I know what it's like. I know how they act. Okay, now mm-hmm. we can react. You know, and so, mm-hmm. and so it wasn't necessarily bad. It was just like I didn't feel like there was as much tension. There was still a lot of tension, but yeah. it wasn't the same level as the first. It was time. different tension. Yeah, yeah. It's like um, I was thinking about that too. It's like they they showed them. They they went. They didn't shy away from showing them, but like they tied into in different ways, like in the train car where. Yeah. I mean, slight spoiler, I guess, where, you know, she is, you're getting her point of view where you can't hear anything and it's behind her, you know, like you see it, but you remember, oh, she can't hear it. She doesn't know it's there. You know, it kind of did a good job of creating suspense despite the, excuse me, despite the fact that we know what these things look like, you know? Right. Um, Yeah. At which, you know, they, to me, they look like a a mix between Venom, the Tremors and Tremors 2 and uh, the aliens from Signs. Yeah. And the Demi Gorgon yeah. a little bit from yeah from, uh, yeah a little bit yeah Stranger Things yeah 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 and so that's so. the thing it's like once you actually see them you see they're not I mean they're scary but they're not that scary mm-hmm. where before it's like you saw glimpses like the unknown always has a bit of dread in oh it. yeah and so yeah. like that, that's what I'm saying it's like unfortunately it's just a natural thing that had to happen mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so like especially with the ending of the first one and stuff like them figuring out how to stop them. Like it, it had to happen. Like there was nothing, uh-huh. there's no way to write around that. Right. Like you had to no. go to that point. So that's the only yeah. thing for me where it's like, like I was edging, my, like I didn't feel like I was as edge of my seat, like the first one. Um, yeah. So that, that I mean that, but that was it for me. Like other than that, I thought everything else was cool. I thought, you know, their goal in this movie, I thought that was good. I thought, you know, mm-hmm. the twist into what happened with that goal, I thought was mm-hmm. really good. Um, yeah, man, I, mean, I, I just thought so much of that was really good. Um, again, I, I don't have much else bad really to say. Yeah, same here. I mean, I, I guess the only thing 
uh, maybe one or two more flashbacks to the beginning just because I want to see more John Krasinski's character. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's a nitpick, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's maybe when I get the Blu-ray and I watch it again, I'll, I'll find something that I think is bad. But right now I just can't think of anything. I, yeah. I had an absolute blast watching this movie. Yeah, I know. If, if you start nitpicking, you can find stuff. Like there was a couple mm-hmm. lines here and there that I was kind of like, uh, okay, you know. But only said by the sun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So yeah, there's just certain things, but that that'd be Nate picky stuff. That's just kind of like, mm-hmm. hey, whatever. Like no one's gonna write the perfect movie, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah, and it, it 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 played really well into the whole. I mean, that theater was quiet. <laughs> you yeah, know? it was just such a good atmosphere, such a gr- really awesome atmosphere for a movie like this. And I thought maybe that idea would get stale going to a second one, but it didn't. Yeah, no, it didn't. So yeah. But then, uh, so moving on here to uh, the pastor side of things, uh, do you have anything for that one, Sir Gary? I mean, just stepping out of what is comfortable, you know, sometimes going and uh, doing things that are very scary, you know, sometimes in life we have to do that. And this entire family has to do that. They could hide in the bunker, but they're trying to get the message out to save everyone around them. Whoever's out there, they know how to do it and they don't just keep it to themselves, you know, so kind of saw a pretty <laughs> pretty inspiring message there yeah you know yeah i mean I, i'm with you i mean that one too just again like, the importance of especially in times of crisis of leaning on people trusting in people uh you know what's his name's character had an issue with trust but you know it's like dude you got to get over that man like these are people you know these are people you love mm-hmm. you spent oh, time you with help them yeah and he didn't and it's just like mm-hmm. you know so even seeing him turn the corner and be like you know, I was wrong. You were right. All that kind of stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. And it was just like, yeah, like, dude, like the world's facing a lot of junk. I mean, he was even like, people aren't worth saving. You know what I mean? And so, I mean, we do, we all get to that point, right? Where it's just like mm-hmm. the heck with people, but oh, indeed. you know, everyone needs help. And when you have a catastrophe like this, uh, you know, we got to step up and we got to be there for each other. And um, so I thought that was good. It's like just the importance of people coming together and not letting things divide them. And mm-hmm. so I thought that was really good. Yep, indeed. Um, lots of lots of good messages in this movie. Yeah. And so, and another thing, if uh, you see aliens running at running at you down the street and you're hiding, turn your cell phone off. Yeah, please. <laughs> For the sake of others around you. Yeah. So moving right on to the dad. Uh, I know. I mean. Listen, it's a scary movie. It's aliens. You've heard yeah. of what we've talked about. Like if you're taking I mean, your if you're taking your small child, maybe ten and under to this, yeah. and they what have you nightmares. What you, yeah, like what this you is on you. All right. Yeah. 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 I uh, man, my daughter asked me what we went and saw last night, and I said a monster movie. If you make noise, you you get eaten by a monster. <laughs> that's good parenting, so, right? There. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, "Oh, that sounds scary." I was like, "Yeah, you're not watching it for a long time, but yeah." Yeah, I mean, my kids won't see it for a long time because I like to sleep. And uh, yeah. if they watch this, they will not sleep, rightfully so. Because, heck, if I watched this at their age, I'd be all messed up. <laughs> oh, I know, right? I know. Heck, there were stuff yeah. we watched like this at their age, and that's why we are messed up. Oh, <laughs> Just put it that way. I still but see yeah. a young Jason Voorhees tipping over the boat at the end of Friday the 13th. It I still know. messes with me. I agree. Uh, yeah, so definitely steer clear of this if you have young kids. Um, yeah. Stick to that PG thirteen rating. Um, Content wise, is it, no issues though. I don't think I don't remember any language whatsoever. Yeah, if it I mean, did, violent, you know, yeah, subtle violence. Did, yeah, and if it did have language, we don't remember it. Much like the first one, like I don't remember much language in the first yeah. one. So it, like, a movie yeah. has barely any dialogue. It's, it's not going to have any. Yeah, that, it's know? like th- their words are chosen carefully. So yes, they're not going to waste <laughs> it on stupid words. Yeah, um, I got a copy yeah. of the script right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yes. lame. That was lame. Sorry, but it was good. It was good. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. But it is. I mean, it, that, that's what it is. So I mean, you don't have a lot of that. I mean, if you have, listen, if you have teenagers, eh, take the family out. Go, go get. Oh a yeah. Scary. Why not? See this in the theater. See this yeah. in the theater. You won't regret yeah. it. And if you go see the theater, you got a whole bunch of previews to open up your candy, and and stuff. The wrappers and stuff like that. Yeah. Do it during the previews, not when you know movies come on. <laughs> There's a lot of that going on last night. It's like, come on. That was really annoying. So, yeah. sir, it is time to rate this thing. And uh, 
as always. Do you are you ready? Are you ready to give a rating? Uh, yeah, I mean, I yeah. Okay, so Gary knows where he's at. Go right ahead, sir. What do you think? I mean, I, I got to go five. I do. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I a movie that I can find that I, I feel like is a perfect sequel, you know, and it plays mm-hmm. right into the next thing. Um, it's a perfect double feature. Um, there. I, there's no reason why I can't I can't go five, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give it gonna give it a high five and a hats off. Yeah. So. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I know. Uh, I know. For me, honestly, sir, I go a four. The only fair. reason the only reason being is just that whole like it, to me that 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 tension that same tension of the first one wasn't there, and it was like yeah. the first one was so original as original as this sequel sequel was, like mm-hmm. it's still like wasn't as good as the first for me you know like it just Mm -hmm. that tension that dread and stuff like that like that that heightened sense of just terror Mm -hmm. it just just wasn't there it wasn't there because of the stuff we discussed earlier um Mm -hmm. now we were saying like just and we were just looking at it as hey as just a sequel among sequels you know Mm -hmm. this is a five this is Mm -hmm. one of the top five sequels of a movie i have ever seen oh yeah normally sequels, you know poop the bed like let's just be real yeah I do. Um, this yeah. one did not so it, it, like if you're looking at it in that end it's a five you're mm-hmm. just looking at it as like kind yeah. of a movie stuff. i'm like uh, i don't know like so still i mean four you guys know four is really really good oh yeah so, yeah uh, go, and, and part have, of my five is probably the fact that i'm just so glad i got to see it in the theater <laughs> you know hey, no, so you oh, know, yeah, you maybe a few right no i did not I, I watched it uh i had to red box it because I, I missed it in the theater I watched yeah. it at home. Yeah, Katie so. and I watched it in the pack theater the, when the first one mm. came out. So that's you know, so that's a lot of that, and it was just like, oh, it just wasn't. It, it was so good, it just wasn't quite there. But but listen, yeah. for those watching our review, the difference between a four and a five at this point for Gary and I, you know, it's, not it, 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 it's not too much exactly. Like I just, yeah, you know, the, like we said, the five is a perfect masterpiece. Was for Gary for me, just that mm-hmm. little bit made me say, you know what the first is still better but as far as sequels go it is the best sequel mm-hmm. i've ever seen but if you're still like continuing this specific story you know that that that's why it, mm-hmm. it, it was that for me but uh still just a great movie go watch yeah. this thing and uh and for those who are watching you're like well wait a second Efren. you gave godzilla versus kong a five and you gave this a four <laughs> how's that possible let me explain myself that hey. was a that was just a straight up guilty pleasure Mm-hmm. And a huge that was just me fanboying, all right. As a fanboy, go. I know good and well Godzilla versus Kong is probably like a three, but as a fanboy, <laughs> it was a five. Can you just there be you honest? Go. Hey, hey so. maybe I'm fanboying right now, you know. <laughs> no shame. So, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and uh if you go to your local AMC theater, you'll get a and you order a large drink, you'll get a nice top gun maverick cup. <laughs> he was very and excited about it. Did you, you know that? I saved mine, it's in the kitchen right now. There you go. Yeah. Good man. No. So yeah. Cool. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Gary, check gives, it out. Gary gives a quiet place to a five, and mm-hmm. uh, I gave it a four. And so would that so be a either, nine? Yeah. So nine out of ten, if you want. <laughs> which hey, I'm perfectly happy with that. Go see. Go see it. Go see it. Go see it in the theater. Yeah. Totally worth your time. Totally worth your money. It is a fantastic, fantastic movie. Mm-hmm. So that's all we got. Go check it out. And we will catch you guys next time. All right. See you. Thanks for watching.